I'm going to have a look at this firearm here. I haven't featured it on my channel before, but I've had it for actually quite a while. This is the Baykal MP161K, they call it, uh, in 22 lr semi-automatic. Um, actually, like, what happened with this gun was, when I originally got it, I took it to the range to test it out, and it was having all kinds of trouble feeding. It was crushing cartridges, like the cartridges were, like, almost bent in half, and it was having real, like, real problems. And what, what, what I found out was it actually wasn't the gun itself failing it was there was in the bolt like the channel where the uh, firing pin is it had gummed up so bad in there that it wasn't moving at all it was pretty much jammed because like even taking like a punch or trying to move that thing was next to impossible it had to be completely cleaned out um, like I would recommend if you pick one of these up take it down completely and clean every single little part don't neglect anything it's not a very good gun to take apart it's not very easy the the initial step is fine removing the uh like the upper from the lower basically but the interior parts of it are actually it's actually really hard to get the spring back in it when you do reassemble it um but it has to be done on this gun. You might buy one out of the box and it might be fine, but I, I still recommend completely taking this thing apart and cleaning it when you get it brand new. So I'll give a look of the gun here. It says uh, Baykal designed and made in Russia here. The, the plastic on this is really nice, really durable, nice plastic. And all of the like rubber pieces here this is a little bit harder, but these uh, inserts are, are rubbery, and they're not like annoyingly sticky rubbery. They're, they're kind of smooth. I don't, I don't mind them anyways. I know some people have a real issue when they have that sort of texture rubber. The grip is very nice. You can see the trigger and the uh, safety here. Really easy to access, and it's, it's not a light safety. It's not something you're going to just click by accident in the position that it's in. You can see the bolt here. It has a huge bolt knob for, I'm assuming it's for um, like if you're wearing gloves, heavy gloves and that, that's why they made it so huge because it doesn't need to be that but um, but it's, it's actually very nice. It works the gun really good and you can see the markings on the bolt here. And I believe this gun is made at the, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, the Yashev's factory, which is just like the one from World War II that does the Mosins, uh, like the, the Mosins with the, uh, you can see the arrow marking. I believe it's the same factory. I'm not positive though. But you can see that. And the magazine is right here on the bottom. They give you this nice grip here if you wanted to grip it from there. And... I will get the magazine out. Very simple. There's a button right here. And it just slides out. And I believe this is a nine cartridge magazine. Because you can have one in the uh, gun and then nine in the mag. And you get two with the gun. It's very nice, easy to load. You just, uh, you can use the little thumb piece here. Well designed. Kind of a heavy duty magazine. There is a little trick to getting it back into the gun. When you put it in, you kind of really have to rock it in. It's not so straightforward. Like, see, it even gives me trouble there. So it kind of goes in on a really weird angle like that. Um, I don't think you're going to be doing fast mag changes or anything with this. So it just um, is something you kind of have to put up with but uh, but it, it's just a warning that it is there it's not like it's broken or anything it's just such a weird it's such a weird angle it goes in because it rotates basically going in and now we can move on really nice rear sight um, you can see the 
screw there for adjustments, like it's fully adjustable. It's kind of an open sight. It's not really uh, something I would say is accurate, but I mean, it's, it's a good sight. It's nice and strong. And your hand guard with the rubber underneath. And uh, there's loops for your slings here. And this is your front sight, and it is metal, it's not plastic. It's actually a metal piece in there. I'm not exactly sure. I've never had these hand guards apart, so I don't know how exactly it attaches in there, but it's a metal piece, and it is huge. It, this gun isn't really set up for like precision shooting if you're just going off the irons. And your barrel here, it's quite a skinny little barrel. And the crown and muzzle, which is really, really recessed crown in there. I'm not sure exactly why they did it that way, but they did. And now we'll flip it around. You can also see the adjustable cheek rest here. This is a really nice cheek rest, the way they did it. And we can see the markings here. Which is, I'm not sure if these are available in the United States or not, but the importer is... Uh, in uh, Rockledge, Florida. I'm assuming they're available in the United States. And then you've got the IMZ Russia. And here's your markings. They've got MP161K and MR161K. I don't know why. Like what the difference is. If they're, they just, if these are marketed in different markets, like under a different name and they just put all the names on there and then you see the uh, marking here the factory marking with the 13 but I believe the 13 is the year that this was actually made and you can see the 22 LR and the nice uh, handguard and the nice little uh, raised by call here the uh, scope was actually given to me from uh, my buddy, my good buddy, and it fits this gun perfectly. It's a just a fixed four powered scope, but it's nice and light. And you can see the rail that uh, is integrated on the gun. It's like a weaver pattern, like a semi uh, Picatinny rail, but it's, it just doesn't go the whole way. And the scope is. Uh, the scope is excellent for this gun because the gun itself is quite heavy, like especially for a 22, it's it's actually quite heavy, but the scope uh, is very light, so it kind of balances it out really nice. I can't say anything too much more about it because once I uh, cleaned it up and everything, I haven't had it out to shoot again, so um, there's not, it's not like I can recommend it or anything, but these things were very affordable. They were one of the last cheap 22s you could get, like a decent semi-auto. And, uh, so for the price point that they were, I wouldn't be afraid of picking them up. I don't know what they go for right now, but it's an interesting gun. It's kind of different and it's got the futuristic design to it. Um... I'm not really sure what else to say about it. It's it's a neat gun. If it's uh, available in your area, I would I would check it out. I guess. And uh, really, other than that, um, thank you for watching.